Hey everyone, welcome to GMI Hub Online. I hope you had a great summer and it is so good to be back. I am excited because today we are going to be interviewing a multi-award winning Canadian music artist here from here in Canada from Saskatchewan. Her name is Eleni. Her full name, Eleni Marie Young, but we're just going to call her Eleni because that is her artist name. And we are excited to have her here to share her story, to learn about her music and learn about the things that she's learned about the music scene. Eleni, welcome to GMI Have Online. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, we are excited to have you here. And for those of you who are watching, if this is your first time watching, welcome as well. Uh, know that you can like and subscribe us on YouTube. Uh, just hit that, that notification button. And you can also follow us on all the social media. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on X. We are on TikTok. And uh, I think I've covered them all. <laughs> um, and we're on Facebook. I think I said that. Uh, all at, at GMI Hub is our, our signature, except on X, we're at Industry Gospel. So hope you get to follow us there. Eleni, <laughs> let's start our conversation. Have you got your uh, beverage ready? I've got mine. I got my water. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> Um, so, Eleni, you have had quite a, a, a career life, seemingly, um, but tell us where it all began. How did you get involved into the music scene? I think music was just something that I've always wanted to do. Um, I was telling someone recently that, and this will age me in a bad way, depending on the listener, but um, I watched a lot of Montana growing up and I think I just had this idea that <laughs> I, know, I had this idea that I could you know, go be a superstar somewhere and then like live this like quiet humble life sort of in town um but of course the dream started a lot earlier than that I was in piano when I was three, and I was in theater and I was in um I never did dance so I could never be a triple threat just noting that but <laughs> um I was writing poems and songs um, as early on as I could really f write and regulate. Um, I had a, a poem published in a book when I was nine, and it was a poem blog surprise. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I think it was just like the natural next step for me was just doing music in some community. Um, so when I was 17 years old, I applied and was accepted into the Art Institute of Vancouver. Um, for an audio engineering degree. So I was super excited. I went and did the interview. I had to, to interview with the the board of near people. Um, I had to do a, a theory test. I had to be in music along or, or piano lessons for so long and kind of pass a test there. And so I got in, it was great. I could not find a place to live. I looked at all kinds of places, even like basement suites and everything. Um, nothing was available for like under $3,000 a month. And that was back like 15 years ago. Well, give or take. So it's crazy to me that it didn't work out and I'm still pursuing it today. Like even in my studio right now, and I've kind of self-taught myself a lot of the stuff. I mean, I'm definitely not a mixing engineer or anything. Maybe that will come. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just part of who I am. It's like kind of in my blood and, um, yeah, I get to do it in every capacity that I see fit in like the seasons of my life. So cool. That's awesome. Like, does anyone in your family do this as well? Or is it just like, this is just something that it's been downloaded to you to this interest yeah. is downloaded right to you. It's just me. Um, my grandparents were, really? um in like a band <laughs> in like a little jamboree band so the one played the guitar and sang and the other played the accordion um and with me for mm -hmm. most of my life so like i mean i was around that like i was always around music and of course i went to church um, up and so i we had an incredible worship team like we had all the instruments we had girls playing drum girls playing bass and i felt like just empowered 
to just pursue instruments and, and music as a woman. I don't know. It's just like, it's always been around, you know what I'm seeing? I'm that's awesome. Now, I, I, I'm going to touch on a little bit of something. I know that uh, when I'm read in your bio that you have a little bit of native in your blood. Does that influence any of your music or any of your writing at all? I mean, in a roundabout way, I think it does. So my grandfather was Métis. Um, so mm -hmm. I am a Métis citizen. And the indigenous parts of me don't necessarily like influence big in terms of like traditional indigenous music of any sort i don't even really listen to it to be honest but um <laughs> my my family has a long line of general trauma and so my dad uh was an alcoholic he passed away 20 and we didn't have a great relationship growing up and so i guess if you kind of tie that into what my grandfather had gone through and how you know kind of spilled over into his kids and then what my dad went through and that spilled over into my sister and i it's just kind of like music became very much a coping mechanism and very therapeutic over time and so i mean mm. yes and no to answer your question <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can understand that. No, it, and and different experiences in our own life can cause like us to turn to something, some kind of an outlet. Mm -hmm. And music is your outlet. So, and you've done yeah. some really good music. <laughs> oh, um, who who has been um, then? Who has been your can I say musical inspiration? Like, like as there as there been any other artists that have inspired you um in your musical journey hmm that is such a good question it's hard for me to really narrow it down to one person but there are there have been women i mean i grew up listening to like 70s 80s <laughs> like i i my sister yeah. and i could sing for like to back pretty much every Bee Gees song and a song <laughs> and Queen, like we just like, that was, that was that. But I think what really inspired me as a young girl and then into my adulthood would be people like Darlene Check, who I think like paved the way for women in the Christian music or worship sector, like just seeing her dominate <laughs> and like songwriters, like, Lord, uh, Lorraine with I love you Lord and just um, Chrissy Nordoff is a friend to me in real life which is really cool she's an insane songwriter and so inspiring and empowering for me as a woman um, yeah I I don't really know how to answer that with like one thing but there's a couple networks of people that have inspired me the years for sure that's awesome. So you were inspired by a lot of women artists, which is awesome, which is, that sounds like it's very important to you. It's very important for that, um, for women to be empowered to, to sing. And if there are any women that are watching right now who don't feel like you're empowered, take note, <laughs> you can be empowered <laughs> to use your music, uh, for whatever God wants you to use it for. Okay. So let's talk your creative process. Okay. Um, okay. Typically, like I've heard a few of your songs and um, I'm kind of curious of what inspires, like wh where do you get your inspiration from in terms of the ideas behind your songs? Um, and and after, well, I'll let you answer that and then I'll ask the next question. <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration comes at the most inconvenient of time. It comes in the middle of the night it comes like when I'm in the shower, <laughs> like just I'm nowhere near <laughs> my phone or anywhere that I, like write it down, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I remember when I, so I, my family restaurant. And so I grew up doing restaurant stuff, serving, busing, hostessing. Um, but I did serve like right up until before COVID. It was just kind of fun. Like <laughs> it wasn't that I needed to serve. It was just like, oh, I just liked doing that with the people. And I remember so many times in serving 
be serving a table and like we're all smiles and everything's good and then i get this like idea like inspiration and so in the back of my server notebook or notepad i would have like these little song ideas down and then i had my phone in my apron pocket and so as soon as i had like a few minutes i would run to like the room or the bathroom wherever it was like just me with no noise and i would record like a voice memo of how i thought <laughs> the song show. like so it's it's just my brain is always kind of going with ideas and constant you know what's a really cool and new way to say something that we all are thinking yeah. or feeling so i can't say that there's a real point a to point b it is really truly different every time but i like it that way. it kind of keeps my life really interesting <laughs> And, and I, I've heard that before. So many people, it's just like four o'clock in the morning, for example. It's like, what? I got a song now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, kind of yeah. idea. <laughs> um, but when you get, the, so when you get those little nuggets of inspiration, it, do you think, it, is it the music that comes first? Is it the words that come first? Is it a combination? Like roughly. Hmm. I think mix? it's usually, so I'm a melody writer, like that's what I specialize in, um, mm -hmm. but almost every time I get lyrics, but I'll, but accompanied with a really melody. So a lot of times right. when I go to sit down to finish a song and it's with um, at least one writer, I'll say, okay, here's the concept, here's like the melody mind and the words now can you help me finish this because i i have no to go from here like the song i put out um about a year ago a year and a half called egypt i had that chorus mm -hmm. like da -da 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 -da. like i had that for a long time i had sort of like played around with syllables and i was okay with things not matching perfectly and i was like it's and it's different and you know no one's probably ever heard this before it's a day of saying a bible story that we all know but you know relating to us and i had to meet with a couple to be like can you guys help like get this song off the ground because i've been sitting on it for so long and i love it but i am so lost when it comes to any words for verses and they were like no problem and i just so have a couple lyric writers that are strong in their lyrics so we we did the thing we finished the song and so just kind of knowing what my strengths and weaknesses are and then collaborating to fill those those gaps at key that's awesome yeah that's a key note too um yes i did notice that on the number of songs there, there, a number of your songs were collaboration type songs which is kind of cool um your latest song i know provider was a collaboration with yeah. um uh, I didn't catch his name, but I know he's from, I, I saw the name and I saw like, he's from Florida, I believe. And I was curious to find out if you ever were in the same room or not <laughs> when that song was yeah. written and recorded. Kagan is from Nashville and, um, we've never met before in real life. <laughs> wow. We're just fans of each other's work. And then we were like, Let's just work together. I mean, we've, we've sat on zoom calls for hours, you know, trying to like dissect the song and make it its own thing. Um, yeah, we've never met in person, but I've met like not in person, but I've his mom and like his family. I'm just like, Oh man, like we got to just make our way down to and hang out with you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The power of Zoom. I love it. <laughs> yes. But you came up with that, like you guys came up with this song. So, so tell us how, how Provider got started. Like this is your latest release, right? Mm hmm Yeah. So, so we, how did that suit? So yeah, we started with, um, he messaged me on Instagram. Like I had followed him for a while. I was really inspired by his style and just his overall vibe, I guess you can say, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. He messaged me and was like, I just want to collaborate. Like, let's do something together. I was like, yes, immediately. Yes. Like not single delay in my brain. Like <laughs> no questions. Asked. So I want to say that was like November or something that he sent me an email early December with concept of provider. And if he were here, he would say like his mom had noticed that he was like kind of 
sad songs. Like, I don't know if you want to say sad, but like down songs. And his mom was like, Kagan, you need to write like a song about just giving thanks to God. Gratitude song, something where you're just, it's upbeat and it's thankful. And he was like, challenge accepted. So he came up with this concept and he sent me a verse and a chorus. And it was like that intro that you hear a song. I was like, this is epic. So I thought like in, in that state, I was like, I mean, it's fun to me. You can just repeat the verse one again. And like, you've got a full song here, you know, like it doesn't, what am I going to add to it? Cause like I said, I'm not a strong like writer. I, I'm more of a, I don't know. And all that I would put into a song felt like it was done. So I was like, what am I going to offer? Mm -hmm. um, but I guess again, my better judgment of myself, um, I did write a verse two for it like, in a couple days. <laughs> and it was just, it kind of came to me as I was driving, of course. And um, we met and we threw that verse two in there. It worked and it totally like mapped theme. It was really good. And then we finished off with like a bridge and just sort of finding different ways to like uh, say, uh, what's the word? Like reiterate, I guess, the theme in sort of an outro tag. And it was so mm -hmm. cool. And so like we've worked um, on this really since like the beginning of December. And we finally got in July and I've been sitting on that song for that long and it was killing me because it's such a good song. And like, I was, I was just telling someone not that long ago, how in my process of recording my own music, I get very tired of my own songs. Like from the time they're written to the time that they're released, I listen to that song probably, oh, I honestly don't even know, like hundreds of times, just because mm -hmm. you're listening to references and tracks and when you're doing like mixing refs like you have to listen for like things so your studio headphones and, and your monitors and your car you're listening in different settings to pick out certain things if there's imperfections and so this song i will never get sick of it like i could still just listen to it over and over and over again and it's just like it's always in my head it's so good so anyways provider i love it and then we decided <laughs> to do um to be like cool and gen z maybe or i don't even know we decided that this was trendy but the original working title was provider spelt like the word provider and then i again i was like mm -hmm. let's take out the vowels and he was like, what <laughs> and then and now it's provider pvrdr and people are like oh so your new song pvrdr i'm like ooh, that was a mistake but also it's cool <laughs> it sets it apart <laughs> i was gonna ask you about that because i'm like it's provider and i'm like what's prv it's an acronym for and then i heard the song that provide oh you just hey. took the vowels out <laughs> so gen z so, so it's just <laughs> there you go just just to be cool <laughs> yeah exactly well, and, and the thing, the, the, now the thing is and you say it's gen z and and i think about this like the style of the song itself is in a sense gen z it's very poppy mm -hmm. it's very like i i imagine i imagine gen z's like dancing around to this song like hey yeah you know yeah. they're really cool so so I, I do you find i i guess i don't know if you know who's listening to your song yet but uh because it just came out in july but um but i know that uh, I, I'm, I'm not gen z but hey i'm having fun with it so I do you know how many other <laughs> do you know of any others that are like uh, like do you have an idea of who's listening to your songs at all or is it just you know the numbers are going up because you are getting a lot of listeners on this song so yeah the song's amazing. doing really well um i don't really know to be honest i mm -hmm. i mean i could look in die analytics but I think at the end yeah. of the day because the message of the song is useful i mean the style is maybe a little tailored to Gen Z maybe, but the, the mm -hmm. message of gratitude and thankfulness and just like acknowledging the Lord as our in every season, I think that mm -hmm. it's getting pretty universal streams across the board. I, I mean, my grandma yeah. loves it. <laughs> um, yeah. so there's that. And, um, and my kids love it and they're six and seven. So like, to see that uh -huh. and her, and let me let me just say my grandmother 
She's a Greek woman. She's feisty. And my kids are little Greek children, and they're feisty, and they're also ridiculously <laughs> and released. So there have been songs that I've released that they're like, this is not like, this is boring or <laughs> ew. So for them on both sides of the spectrum to like lighter, I'm just like, we're doing it. This is great. I also Kagan for that because like he produced a song like totally out my wheelhouse, my, my box. It's the song that I, or the sound that I love, but I can't really mm-hmm. replicate it like i can't make that organically it takes a lot of brain power and for him he was like oh this is what, what i do every day <laughs> amazing oh <laughs> uh, no that, that, so your song see you just said something that i thought was just so appropriate i know that when before we even started recording i was telling you about um what our definition of gospel music is all about and literally it's about the message and i love what you said about provider it's about being grat like being grateful for basically what god has done in our lives and how he has provided for our lives i love that and even if it's gen z ish and, and like you think it's gen z but it's transcending across basically many generations anybody can listen to that song and just Mm -hmm. enjoy it if you haven't heard that song provider you can check it out on uh spotify and any any um online listening radio uh, music listening um service that you that you use whether it's spotify apple music all the deezer all the rest right um she also has a video you have a video on youtube correct right I believe you have a video um, also on YouTube. Not for provider yet, but I will soon. I hope. Ah. Gonna, we want to do like a oh, visualizer okay. for it, but we haven't a video for this one yet. For, yeah. It's on the horizon. Ah. <laughs> and it's on the horizon. So look out for the video called Provider and uh, spelt without the vowels. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's P R V D R, but it's called Provider without the vowels. And you got to listen to this song. Hopefully you'll hear it on, on radio uh, if you haven't heard it already. And I hope it gets you jumping and gets you encouraged because God is our provider. Well, they're commercial for your song. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so let's talk live performances now. Um, do you, a lot, you do a lot of live performances? Um at this point like have you have you done a lot of touring i have not regrettably um i was very very fortunate to get the opportunity to sing um well i this past few months i've had a really a few really cool gigs unfortunately i have battled like a lung infection slash pneumonia so it's been like Mm -hmm. i'll ride of like anxiety but um Mm. I have actually had a ridiculous amount of stage fright for like my life, like hard, hardcore stage fright. Like I'll choke, I'll, mm. I'll freeze. Like I don't even know. I have no idea where that even. Yeah, I there was an incident that happened when I was thirteen at a talent show, so I can't actually pinpoint it to a time and a place. But it affected me so much, like throughout my whole life. But anyway, um, wow. in May. I was in Ottawa for um, the National Prayer Breakfast, and I was like official national anthem singer for all three events. That was really fun. I didn't have a voice. Um, I went and I was like so like I just sick. I don't even know how else to describe it. I felt like I was getting like nosebleeds. I was getting, I like had migraines. It was like not a great beat, but I pushed through it because I really wanted to just like prove to myself that I could. And you know, the Lord came through. I did not have a voice, a singing voice for the first, like on Sunday night, but on Mm. Monday night and Tuesday morning for both the the leadership summit and the, or leadership dinner, sorry, and the prayer breakfast, it it will make a sound and sing the national anthem. It was so low. Like it was like, oh, God. <laughs> and oh wow. people, I remember like hearing everybody sing in the audience. And I was like, they don't know if they should just stay with me or that they should hit up. Like, <laughs> it 
<laughs> such a weird space. <laughs> Anyways, I was good. Like I home and I that was at the beginning of May. I went home and I I didn't know what I was dealing with. Like I thought it was chest or a lung infection. So I was taking like all this is on a steroid, antibiotics, like anti antibiotics. Like I don't know. I was on it all. And then I got asked um, to sing to open for Draylen Young, who is um, a gospel Christian worship leader artist from Michigan, and he was also going to be in Ottawa again in uh, at the end of June. And so I was good; like I healed up um, by May. I was doing okay, and then the other lung, I found out it was like a like a double pneumonia situation no um so i got so sick again this time it was like it knocked me right out i could i couldn't i couldn't i finally got a voice back like the week of the performance but it wasn't like, a great voice and so i was really anxious about that and so the two times i say the two times that i've done the things and like had a real perform experience were like so crappy and oh. but the feeling i had when i was on that stage because i hired a band like i had an incredible bass player and md who's from toronto um i had a keys player from ottawa and um my drummer was also from ottawa and like they practiced for months like they were ready and I felt like I kind of let them down by not being like my best self, but in the moment of being on stage and just like getting to experience like the energy in the room. Oh my gosh. I was like, I want to do this for a living. Like it was all the fear that I had had from like that 13 year old self experience, like totally flew out the window and I just mm. want to do it so bad. And we've even before this particular thing went down, um, we started planning a tour for the release album. Um, it was supposed to be in the fall, but it's not happening in the fall. It's going to probably be in the later spring. I'm um, hoping to do like a cross Canada tour. So we'll see whether that happens or not. I don't know. Cause like I'm super busy. <laughs> My life is insanity, yeah. but man, <laughs> the feeling of getting to be up there. Oh, I wish I could just feel that all the now that I get why people like chase touring and performances because it's just like man it's fun anyways wow i talked for like 25 minutes there but you know you know the story what? now you have a little background <laughs> yeah, I <do>. <laughs> no i i totally get it and i love that you shared that because um how often lately you know there's an there's i guess a little bit of an assumption being made that you know you're well known so you must be doing live performances right and you're going nope <laughs> no. So that begs the next question. How do you share your music? How do you connect with your audiences primarily? Yeah. You know, it's interviews like this where I, mm -hmm. people and a little bit more of my heart behind what I do and, you know, the stories behind the songs. I feel like I gain new relationships with people every time that I do kind of like an interview of any sort. Um, mm -hmm. I love getting to, I, I work with amazing team and I've been super blessed to have a few songs at radio now. And so getting to connect with the station, like their listener base, like that's been so cool. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm also pretty active on social media. So back in November, I started doing like sad pop covers where I would just, I don't know produce a little sad pop version of like your favorite nostalgic song like i mean i've done them all <laughs> trading my sorrows <laughs> shout to the lord the lord i don't know one i even did like the prince of egypt song because it felt right <laughs> you know um wow. <laughs> and it went viral a couple times and uh ended up gaining like fifty thousand followers over the course of two or three months and so just like mm -hmm. kind of connecting with them and getting to you know build listenership through their relationship we have and just my instagram as like a space where people can reach out and i'll i'll you know talk back to them like i'm not that big of a deal <laughs> where i ignore people um and then just kind of like pulling them and bringing them as part of the journey and seeing like what they want what are you wanting from me you want a sad pop cover album do you want like you know 
do you want me to finish the album I'm working on? I did like a um, GoFundMe, what do they call it? Kickstarter campaign where I was yes. overfunded. And that was crazy because like it just showed me there are people out there that want to hear my music. And so yeah. just keeping that relationship and that open line of communication, you know, alive and having them as part of the journey is the key. And that's kind of built over time. So more people are kind of in with me and doing the thing. So it's cool. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and I know I didn't ask this earlier. How long have you been actively in the music scene, roughly? Mm, I would say 10 years. About 10 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 10 years of, of literally uh, almost like one-on-one -on -one communication situations like, that's what it sounds like it's like having the interviews it's seemingly one-on-one -on -one, even though it does reach a, a larger audience mm -hmm. um and social media again one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. being personable with with your audience members that's amazing that takes dedication and it's paying off <laughs> it's really well and and i think that's amazing hmm? i only doing this kind of stuff um, I think it was 2020 or 2020 when I connected with, um, uh, Sharon, who is a PR manager now, um, before that I was just like throwing music into them and hoping that someone <laughs> would listen. So mm -hmm. getting to do the connection part, I think has a huge difference and it's been really cool to get to know more about people like you and what you're offering and the listeners and like the just the people it's it's a lot more two-sided and a lot less like um, find my music and stream my stuff and see my on social media like this is this feels like such a nice little we're having coffee we're having tea we're having water we're chilling you know we're just having yeah. a conversation and it feels so personable whereas like if I were to focus all my efforts on just like building a huge social media base, it's still very like, come watch me as I share with you my life, you know, and pardon it if you want, but you know what I mean? So this yes. is pretty new for me still. And I love it. It's so fun. And I just love getting to meet people <laughs> and, and chat all things music. It's so great. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, it's, it's awesome for me too. I love meeting new people. And I'm, I don't even have your background, but, but it's, it's situations like this. It doesn't matter. The fact that the, um, we're able to, and we were able to share, um, what we can do for what we, what we do and how it helps other people is, is I think the, the core of what's behind both our hearts. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think it's absolutely amazing. I'm thrilled. Uh, and if you're just tuning in right now, I'm just having a conversation with Eleni, who is a Canadian um, award-winning artist, <clears throat> gospel artist. Um, she has just released a song with Keegan uh, from the U.S. Um, called Provider, spelt P, uh, spelt Provider without the vowels. <laughs> so P-R-V-D-R, um, which you've got to listen to. Um, It'll, it should be on radio by now. I think it's just it's just allowed to be on radio, so you should be able to hear it on radio. If not, definitely check it out on on Spotify and any listening streaming service that you use. Um, and soon, soon <laughs> there'll be a video uh, for yes. it as well, or a visualizer for it, so you can look out for that as well. Um, one more thing, just for fun. I know you've recorded and worked with a number of various artists, um, I think mostly across the border. Um, but is there any particular artist that, whether they're alive or not, is there any particular mm. artist that if you had the chance to do work with, whether it's to write a song or do a recording um, with them or even to share the stage with, is there any particular artist or set of artists that you'd be interested in in doing that with? Oh, man. That is such a good question. <laughs> I think, like, right now, I have my sights set, like, in a real practical and maybe possible option. I would love to work with Forrest Frank. I don't know if that's, like... Oh. Yeah, do you know who Forrest Frank is? Everybody uh, does. He, he's just like, he's a, the gen 
he, yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah. So he, I feel like he's doing something so, and it's not that, I, like, I would love to work with him in, like, an actual collaboration, um, but I'd love to just sit down with him and have coffee and pick his brain because he is showing me and several artists, I think, especially in Canada, that you do not need a major record label to sign you in order to do the music thing. And that has been so mm -hmm. inspiring. I've been watching him and I've been watching um, No Big Deal, um, who's a rapper, a rapper in the States. Like rap mm -hmm. is one of my favorite um, genres, so like don't at me, but um, just yeah. getting to see. And I mean, yeah, I could go on. Josiah Queen and Ryan Ward, just seeing how these people are taking like their own I, they're taking responsibility and they're taking or, um what's the word i'm trying to think of they're claiming the power that they have over their own sound and their song and they're putting out and we don't know how much all of what they're doing is costing and like frankly i would love to sit down and find out like just i just told you guys like it costs so much money to just make one song and then to market it you know yeah. so i would love to just on brain um, but Forrest, I would love to do a collab with him. Oh my gosh, that would be cool. So I don't know. Maybe yeah. it'll happen. Probably not. He just did a collab with Tori Kelly. Okay. <laughs> Wait a second. Bye for like the female collaborations going forward. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that's awesome. That's awesome. I've been hearing a lot about Forrest. I'm going to have to reach out to him <laughs> find out. Because um, he yeah. is, you're right, he's making. Um, an, an interesting, I want to say like a footprint into the music yes. scene that's really inspiring a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. So who knows, maybe we'll get him on our show and get him to share a little bit more about that. Um, but um, do you have a particular, and then one other thing, do you have an all time favorite song or um, album that you, that just kind of just speaks to you, whether it's your own song or whether it's just a song from another artist, is there any, particular favorites that you have? Um, well, I am a huge Tori Kelly fan. Um, I've loved her work since like she was on YouTube <laughs> way back mm -hmm. in the day, but mm -hmm. she put out an album like back in the spring called Tori period. <laughs> like it's very like, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a statement. And, um, she worked with John Bellion on that album. It is like one of the coolest pieces of music I think I've ever heard. Like, it's just like, it's Tori and it's like all of her personalities. I guess like she, some of them are, some of the songs are very like high energy and like hippie, but not like, she, like it's almost like K-pop, even though that's odd, but like that's the vibe. And then some of them are like gut-wrenching beautiful and like just take you on a journey of sadness and emotion and then other ones are like i just want to dance and so i mean like i went to see her on tour she came to edmonton and my husband got us some tickets and we got front row stands not seats <laughs> but we stood at the front <laughs> row and i was just like by her energy and like the songs of this album that she brought to life right in real time in front of me. And I was like, this is what an album needs. Like it, it had so many beautiful differences that all just fit together so nicely. And yeah, just mm -hmm. inspiring. I've listened to that album top to bottom, like almost on repeat since like not in <laughs> April. And that says a lot because like I said, I do get tired of music like pretty fast, especially my own, but like in general, you know, but prayer, I've not mm -hmm. gotten tired of, and Tori's album, I've not gotten tired of. So I don't know. That's like kind of a new album, but of course I love the Prince of Egypt and the whole album too, like that score and like the Hans Zimmer, yes. like oh, that's my child, my childhood, and my inspo and all the things. So yeah. <laughs> love it. what is in this tea? <laughs> it's it. just throw coat, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like, Dur -dur -dur. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> You're just enjoying the moment. That's what's happening. Yes. And it's a good tea. <laughs> good tea. <laughs> well, Eleni, it has been absolutely so fun to get to know you and and to get your music, uh, to learn more about your music. And 
I'm so thankful that you're able to be here with us today. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your ideas, your thoughts. And um, I'll also publicly thank Sharon because Sharon's the one who, who arranged this. So uh, thank, thank you, Sharon, Sharon <laughs> for this as well. Um, and audience, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope that um, it was, I hope you had just as much fun learning about Eleni as I have. I hope that even the, I, the, the, the advice that she shared, you know, about five minutes <laughs> that she shared about <laughs> the industry, especially if you're an aspiring and, uh, and emerging artist, um, take note, take note, um, you know, t writing songs and throwing them against, so, so to speak, throwing against the, uh, the music scene in hopes that someone will grab them. It, your songs can easily get buried, but yeah, do take note to be more, um, purposeful, more intentional about how you get your music out there. Um, if you want to learn more about Eleni, you can go to her website. It's basically eleni.ca, I believe, E-L-E-N-E-E.ca. -E um, you can definitely check her out there. Uh, you can listen to her on radio. And again, you can listen to her music on all streaming stations or uh, services. Um, and uh yeah and as Alini said if you have any questions for her uh she's more than welcome to answer any questions directly whether you want to catch her on instagram at uh, and i think her instagram is at Alini young right you use your you use your full name there yeah Alini um, m young and yeah. Eleni M. Young. Okay. Um, so take note of that. If you want to catch her on Instagram, definitely connect with her on that. Um, if And uh, of course, you're more than welcome to connect with us at GMI Hub. Um, we have our website, gmihub.ca. If you are new again to our, our YouTube channel, you are more than welcome to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and you want to see more um, and hit that notification button so anytime that we are live you are able to get a notification and you can tune in enjoy and learn with us as well um, thank you so much for being with us uh, again yes you can check us up on our, our, our social medias as well so again, thank you so much for being with, with us. Thank you, Eleni, for being with us. And everyone, have yourself a great day. Until next time, bye for now.